Hee-haw. Hello there, my friends. I'm here to bring you another Nintendo News Roundup. Not from my car, but I, I was able to access my studio today. You are welcome. And, uh, and I know this uh, News Roundup is coming pretty soon after the previous one. You don't have to worry. It's not going to, you know, my channel isn't just going to become the Nintendo News Roundup channel. <laughs> I know some people have uh, had those concerns. This is a uh, purely an extra thing. It turned out to be a whole lot of fun and a lot of people really liked it. So it's pretty much just whenever I have enough news items, I will do another one. There's no schedule or anything. And, uh, and I'm here today in particular because there are a couple really good juicy news items that I did not cover last time. I kind of missed them. So I'd like to talk about them now as well as a few more things that have come up since then. First and foremost, Nintendo released a patch for Splatoon 2. This was the, you know, the usual kind of patch, uh, you know, weapon tweaks and modifications and all, you know, a little balancing and stuff. But the most exciting thing is that they announced a bonus one-off Splatfest. Splatfests were discontinued some time back. I mean, there's only so long they can, they can really, really actively support the game. Uh, but just by complete surprise, they said, yeah, we're gonna do another one. It's just kind of a one-off bonus one. Even better though, it is a rematch between Mayo and Ketchup. The Mayo and Ketchup Splatfest was legendary. <laughs> it was one of the most important events of my entire life. Mayo did end up winning, thank goodness. Thank you, condiment goddess Mayonetta. <laughs> But now it looks like Ketchup is going to have another chance for victory. Who will win? We shall see. Better be Mayo, though. Ketchup, come on. It's just not as versatile. I'm not going to go into that right now. Down in the comments. Fight. Fight about those condiments down in the comments. And really, from a business standpoint, this random Splatfest is a really good idea. I mean, lots of people already like Splatoon. It's already very, very popular, but they decided to do this one random one just to get people talking about the game again. And then at the same time, they're going to release another demo of the game that shows off multiple modes. The game will be discounted and it will come with a seven day free trial of Nintendo Switch Online. That's marketing your game right there. That is, that is marketing the heck out of your game. Next up, here's an exciting one. Famitsu recently had an interview with a number of folks from HAL Laboratories, the people responsible for making the Kirby games. They were asked about what they wanted to do with Kirby games moving forward. Design director Riki Furman said, for me personally, I'd really like to make a non-action Kirby spin-off game. We're going to have a wide variety of Kirby coming out in the future. With all of these quotes, it's hard to tell what is an actual hint about future games and what is just something these people personally want, but the latter half of this quote really makes it seem like this is something we can actually expect. And really, Kirby has had so many spin-off games, I could see a non-action one. I could see, I don't know, I could see any kind of Kirby, Kirby spin-off at this point. Sure, he's so puffy and cute, just make a cooking game. Just make Kirby Mama, Kirby cooking Kirby Mama, I don't know. Even more exciting though are the next two quotes. General Director Shinya Kumazaki said, each entry in the series has its merits, but I want to make something that exceeds previous games. Then lead action programmer Katsuyoshi Sumitomo said, Said, I really want the next thing we create to be called the pinnacle of Kirby games. I'm positive the Kirby series can become even more fun. Wow. Again, we're not really sure if these are referring to anything specific. This could just be something they want to do in the future. But that's two of them saying that really making it sound like something they are currently working on is going to be very big. And it could technically be that they're not working on the next Kirby game yet. They're just talking about later. But Star Allies came out a good few years ago now. And, uh, you know, they, they make Kirby games at a pretty good pace. They don't generally give us these big, massive gaps between titles. So pinnacle of Kirby games. That's a that's a very exciting prospect. Um, if I might indulge in a little snarkiness, that's not going to be too tough after Star Allies. But up, 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 up. Um, <laughs> No, I was very critical of Star Allies. It was my first Kirby game since I was a kid, and I was really excited to kind of get back into the series, and it really, really fell flat for me. Um, but I'm very excited by the idea of them coming up with something really new, really amazing, really fun. I mean, I, it's Kirby. He's one of Nintendo's babies, and I fully believe that he is capable of many, many amazing things. I have already said before, I would love to see a 3D Kirby game, like a 3D platformer or something. But, you know, I would also take just a really, really solid 2D platformer, you know, another title on the Switch or something. So I'll have to wait and see if any of this comes to fruition or if this is just some people having dreams, just dreaming about the future, Kirby. Um, it's that specific. It's a specific thing right there. I really want the next thing we create. How likely is it that they are not already working on the next thing they create? So I don't know. Just gotta wait and see. 
Next up, the Nintendo account hacking situation has actually grown a bit worse since the last time I reported on it. Nintendo themselves claim that over 160,000 Nintendo accounts have been hacked, and that includes the leaking of a lot of personal details, pretty much anything that you would have in your account. Nintendo decided they needed to take somewhat drastic measures, and they have actually disabled the ability to log in specifically using your Nintendo network ID. It is good that they seem to be addressing the problem, though I must say there has got to be something wrong with their security uh, especially because like these people at least so far don't seem to be like identity thefting people they're just like running in grabbing a hundred bucks you know worth of v bucks for fortnite and then jettisoning the, jettisoning the account so there is something in the security here that is making it easy for this to happen so um i don't really know what needs to be done but whatever it is they need to do it um but at least in the meantime they've disabled the ability to log in with the the in and id and uh, and again i will urge you just as nintendo was urging everybody if you have not already secure your account with two-step verification very very important in other news, an activist investor firm named Value Act Capital Partners LP has purchased $1.1 billion in shares at Nintendo. An activist investor is someone or a group of someones who purchases a very, very large share in a company in order to try to sway what that company does. But whereas if I owned that kind of stake at Nintendo, I would be busting down their door every single day complaining at them about what I think they're doing wrong, Value Act Capital Partners LP apparently thinks they're doing a really great job. Doesn't Really want to change anything at all and in fact says that nintendo is currently poised to become the next disney plus which in the context kind of just makes it sound like they also mean the next disney where they are a, a platform and an intellectual property holder that just has the potential to become very very big and have a very very big service like disney plus is and i don't want to lay the snark on too thick here because this is definitely a very big discussion for another day um but part of me is like why do you think that though? Nintendo is dragging their feet super duper hard about the distribution, you know, whether selling it or streaming it or whatever of their legacy content. I've made a whole entire videos about this. I agree that Nintendo is poised. They, they have the potential to be somewhat the, you know, the video game equivalent of Disney, maybe not quite as big, but still very, very large like Disney is. Um, but their actions have shown that they're not really interested in doing that, or it's, it's kind of hard. Their words say that they want to be, they, you know, they've been expanding into the, the theme parks and toys and things. They want to make, you know, they want to expand their IPs and that's great. And that's definitely a great thing. Um, but again, when it comes to their legacy content, you know, like I think the Nintendo equivalent of Disney plus, I think of Nintendo switch online, having tons and tons of platforms and tons and tons of games and giving us access to all of this stuff for, you know, a monthly fee or whatever. Um, they're not doing that. They are not doing it. The switch is over three years old and we still don't have that. Everything they've been doing with, all of their actions have shown us they don't really wanna do that or at least they don't wanna do that in good time. Of course, any of this could just drop literally all at once. They could announce this big crazy streaming service. Um, But at the time, at least as of right now, I'm kinda of like, really? You think they're gonna be the next Disney Plus? I don't know. Oh man, this discussion could get really big because Disney Plus isn't just legacy Disney content. It's also Disney taking all of their IPs and just being like, make new ones, make new ones, make new one of this. Let's buy this and make new ones of this. They make new content all the time. Whereas Nintendo is sitting on all these properties. They don't want to let us play the old ones and they don't want to make new ones. So I'm a little skeptical about their, uh, their conclusion there and how they just kind of want to sit back and wait for it to happen. But I don't know, again, we'll talk about that later. Okay, this is a funny one. This observation comes courtesy of Spawnwave. I would have never noticed this. Um, April 20th was when Reggie fils officially took his spot on the board of directors at GameStop. Uh, he joined them in an effort to try to help out the company because they've been just self-destructing for a while now. Not making a lot of very wise moves, but you know, that's a whole thing. And it was the very next day, the very next day, that GameStop announced that all of their highest ranking executives, including the CEO, would be taking dramatic pay cuts. Now, back in the Wii U days when Nintendo was not doing very well, what did Nintendo do? What did Satoru Iwata and a couple of the others do? 
they took pay cuts. That is an incredibly unusual thing for a company to do. A lot of companies will literally, I mean, we're seeing it now in this whole recession going on, they will literally go under rather than take their big juicy pay cuts because we, we live in this <laughs> really big conversation, uh, this whole capitalistic thing where you have these companies where the couple of dudes up at the top are making all of the money, so much so that they're not willing to let go of that and the rest of the company is crumbling underneath them and they're like, yeah, but I mean, I'm not gonna not make hundreds of millions of dollars here. So GameStop did it. They're not making enough money. So they said, okay, how about all of us up here at the top of the ladder just don't make quite as many tens and hundreds of millions of dollars. <laughs> Maybe it will help keep the company afloat for a while. And like I said, it's a very unusual thing. Is it a coincidence? Is it a coincidence that Reggie joined the company on April 20th and then on April 21st, they announced that they would be taking pay cuts. Did he walk in there? Did he kick some butts and take some names? How many did it take? Did he affect this decision? We don't know, we can never know, but I think that that is a very, very interesting observation. Thank you, Spawnwave. Moving on, Nintendo recently filed a patent for some sort of amiibo product, and of course patents, we can never really take them too seriously. Some patents can be you know, hard evidence of some new product that's coming along, or it can just be some random flight of fancy idea that Nintendo had and they just wanted to, you know, just wanted to get it patented just in case. This one is very vague. It shows something with Amiibo and you're, it looks like you're using the character, like moving around a character, maybe one that you scanned or something. Incredibly vague, so there's not really a lot to talk about it, but I will say it is worth bringing up just to say, Maybe they're making that amiibo game I've been dreaming about, big amiibo adventure where you actually get characters, but you know, like what actual Toys to Life was supposed to be and that's what everyone else did, but then Nintendo just kind of wouldn't do it. I got a whole video on the subject. Could this be pointing to that? Probably not, but maybe it's at least worth, you know, reading this story and bringing it into your mind and thinking about it for a couple minutes and then moving on, <laughs> you know? In some very disappointing news, tarantulas have officially been nerfed. <laughs> People are always digging into Animal Crossing New Horizons, and it seems that recently they've discovered some different spawn rates for various bugs and fish and whatnot. The tarantula market, as you may know, is a very, very lucrative business, and if you can trick the game into spawning a lot of tarantulas, you can make a lot of money. It seems that Nintendo didn't like this. Um, they mostly lowered the spawn rates for, like, almost all of the most valuable bugs. They made it a lot harder to make a significant amount of money on catching bugs, forcing them to spawn, even like peacock butterflies, you know, all you need is a couple blue flowers and they spawn all the time. You can sell them for a bunch and it seems Nintendo didn't really like that, which is, um, it's a little disappointing just because like, once you get your turnip game really, really rolling, it stops being worth collecting bugs and doing other, you know, smaller things anyway. Um, so this really just means, okay, I guess I'm just never gonna catch bugs again on purpose. I don't know. I mean, it definitely balances the game more early on because a lot of people, you know, when the first game first launched, people were getting islands with tons of tarantulas and paying off their houses super duper fast. So this does affect the early game a bit more. Later game, not so much when you don't really need to catch bugs anymore, but uh, I do think that's interesting. L lots of different, you know, you can see the full list. Uh, read through it, see the changes they made. I do think it's really funny that like Splatoon is like, you know, this weapon does one more point of damage. This one takes uh, this much more time to recharge all these little things. And Animal Crossing is like, tarantula spawn this percentage less and this bug appears more often here. And I don't know, <laughs> it's just pretty funny. Speaking of Animal Crossing in a revelatory story that broke recently, apparently Elijah Wood also plays Animal Crossing. Not super surprising at this point. Basically, everyone is playing Animal Crossing, but uh, Elijah Wood was trying to find someone with good turnip prices, found a fan, replied to one of his tweets and said they had uh, like 599 bells each, which is absurd, absurdly high. He DMs them, goes to their town, hangs out for a bit, picks some fruit, sells his turnips. I don't know, it's just pretty funny. <laughs> Feel good story of the year right there. I mean like, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter what kind of just place that you're in, you're a famous celebrity, you starred in Lord of the Rings, doesn't matter. You wanna find a good price for your turnips and you'll do whatever it takes. You will go to any town that you need to to get a good price for your turnips. Five ninety nine? I'd visit anyone's town for five ninety nine, five hundred ninety nine <laughs> bells per turnip. So that was cute. Next few items, Smash Ultimate has been out for well over a year now, and yet all of a sudden everyone was just like, you know what still really, really stinks? Playing this game online. 
you know what? I'm still upset about it. So everybody got together and started hashtag fix ultimate online. People are just, just kind of upset all over again and I cannot blame them. I have been very critical of Nintendo's online service uh, pretty much this whole entire time. And uh, I've said it before and I'll say it again, they can fix it. They are choosing not to fix it. It would take money to fix it, to make a you know better net code and all that stuff. But if any fighting game in the history of fighting games has worked well online, then Smash Ultimate can work well online, especially considering it is the number one highest selling fighting game of all time. People are trying to play Smash Ultimate as a legitimate esport. It's a very, very big, thriving community. It's the most popular, highest selling fighting game of all time, and Nintendo can't be bothered to fix the online. I know some people don't have much of a problem with it, but I myself, along with a lot of others, have had lots and lots of grief. It's it's barely even playable. I don't even enjoy doing it. I don't do it. I did it enough for the review and a little bit later just to see how it was and it still stunk. It's still constant disconnects, input lag, all that stuff. It just does not live up to the Nintendo standard of quality and that's lame. So I agree. Hashtag fix ultimate online indeed. In the singularly most exciting news story of the week or possibly even month, Dr. Goomba Tower. <laughs> My Dr. Goomba Tower, ah. Dr. Mario World is a mobile game. They've been slowly revealing new characters for it and their latest one is three Goombas stacked on top of each other and they're in a doctor suit. Like, the, like their kids stacked up pretending to be a grown up. It's three Goombas pretending to be a doctor. I love it. It's the best new Nintendo character since Midna and I want more of it. I want Dr. Goomba Tower to be in the next Paper Mario, one would be in the next 3D Mario. I want him to be a regular part of the Mario canon. Please make it happen. He could dress up in all sorts of different suits. It's Dr. Goomba Tower and then it's like, Circus Master Goomba Tower, I don't know. Chef Goomba Tower, any number of things he could do. Make it happen, please. Well, that's it for now. I hope you have enjoyed this most recent Nintendo news roundup. Please head down to the comments and only argue about ketchup versus mayo. I want it heated. I want people angry. Fire up that blood. Really, really give it. Give it to those other people who disagree with you because they're wrong. They're awful. Surely the one that you prefer, mayo or ketchup, is the superior condiment and the other one is pretty much just gross. And you don't really get the point. <laughs> Anyway, see you later. Have a good day.